Hello beautiful souls and welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. It's the Empress and in today's video we are looking at what your intuition is trying to tell you. So I do feel that this is going to be coming through in almost a shadow work kind of way. That is the vibe that I'm picking up on just so that you guys are aware. But let's go ahead and get into this pile selection. I did shuffle out a lot of the oracle cards here just to kind of save some time because I do feel that this is going to be um, more of an in-depth reading here for you guys. So out in front of you, here we have our pile selection. And I really want to ask you guys to take a couple of deep breaths, really ground yourself, connect to your intuition, clear your energy if you need to, um, really, really try to tune into your intuition, try to tune into even like your third eye or your crown chakra um, kind of energies as well, and maybe even meditate on these images out in front of you to find which one of these is calling you the most, which one of these is holding the messages that your intuition is trying to tell you. Um, so this reading is more so about kind of what your intuition is trying to tell you that maybe you aren't seeing or you aren't seeing clearly or correctly. Um, just so that you know to keep that in mind, like what is your intuition telling you that you aren't understanding, that you're misunderstanding, that you aren't seeing clearly, um, or maybe you're misinterpreting. So out in front of you here we have pile number one, two, three, and four, and I will have the timestamps to the beginning of each specific reading in the description box below, along with the links to the cards that I'm using for anybody who's interested or feels called to any of the decks that I use here today. You can also find a link to my Etsy store for anyone who's interested in checking that out, as well as the details as to how to enter the monthly free tarot reading giveaway. Um, you can find the information for that in the description box as well. So with all of that said, go ahead and pause the video if you still need a moment to choose a pile. And I am going to go ahead and move on to pile number one. Hello, my beautiful group number one. Those of you that chose pile number one, this reading is for you. And we are looking at what your intuition is trying to tell you today. So starting off here, this is the image that you guys chose. And um, the initial message coming through here is a message of getting out of your own way. I feel for group number one that you guys may be kind of stuck in a very limited perspective or only seeing things from one point of view. And what I'm really feeling here for you guys is that there is this need to see yourself from somebody else's eyes or see a perspective or a situation from a different perspective. Um, the way this is coming through here to me is kind of like through love languages. So. Uh, what I mean by this is like the sense of expecting people to know how you need to be loved or what you need in relationships and connections and expecting that other people need things exactly the same way that you do. Um, feeling like, well, because this is the way that I like it, because this is the way that I need it, because this is the way that I feel loved, then this must be what I have to do in order to to make this other person feel that way. Whether this is in regards to a relationship or not, that's the energy that's coming through here that your intuition is wanting you to become aware of, that you are living out of a sense of expectation, expecting people to see things that you aren't willing to communicate or expecting people to see what you want and need um, without you being able or willing to see what they want and need. Um, this could be playing out in a lot of different ways in your life, but how I'm really feeling it is like the sense of reflection. If you guys are in certain situations or relationships where you are having a hard time connecting, a hard time communicating, or where you are finding yourself becoming more and more resentful or feeling like your partner or this other person doesn't do enough for the relationship or feeling um, a lack of love or a lack of emotional connection, there's a need to see how you're expectations are playing a role in this group number one so let's go ahead and get into the rest of your cards here starting off we are going to be looking at how your intuition is communicating with you group number one we have astrology so you guys may be 
currently at this time very drawn to zodiac um, readings or um, astrology, you may need to really look into your own birth chart and find where certain Venus placements are that may be playing a role or really paying attention to the retrogrades and the energies that they kind of bring forth in your life and things like that, I feel are going to be very, very important. And there is definitely an energy of Taurus, Libra, Aquarius energy coming in here. Um, I'm not entirely sure why the air signs are playing such a role here for you guys, but that energy is definitely coming in. Libra, of course, is the seventh house um, and has a lot to do with relationships and our ability to communicate, our ability to be fair and put ourselves in the other person's shoes. So that may be kind of part of why that energy is coming forth here, as well as Venus rules over uh, Libra and Taurus energies. So um, yeah, I'm just really feeling those signs coming in here playing a significant role. Uranus rules over Aquarius. So the placements of Uranus, which I believe is actually in the sign of Taurus at this time, may be playing a significant role, but your intuition is drawing you to astrology for you to learn something about how certain planetary energies are influencing you and your relationships at this time. Let's go ahead and see what you need to be uh, mindful of. Group number one, we have the Burning Man, Collective Power, Supreme Prayer, Three of Cups, and Celebration. Okay, um, so you guys may be expecting people or certain people or certain situations to celebrate your accomplishments or to raise their glass to you or to recognize all the work that you've done in some way, shape, or form. And and there's a need, again, for this, to release this expectations that you place on the collective. Um, you guys may be feeling very left out or very secluded. And group number one, what I'm really getting here is that your intuition wants you to see how you've secluded yourself with your perspectives and your expectations of other people. And instead of believing that maybe you've been alienated or excluded from certain situations, relationships, or events. It's more of a, you have separated yourself from it because you didn't like the way things were going or because you expected things to go in a different way. So maybe you got angry or upset or your feelings were hurt. Um, and it caused you to kind of separate from that. There's also a message here saying that you feel like you aren't supported. There's something about feeling a lack of support. Um, so there, Mercury may also be playing a huge role for you guys. I know I said Taurus, Libra, and Aquarius as air signs, but it's actually Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius for air signs. So that's kind of interesting. Venus does rule over Taurus, but um, there is some Mercury energy coming in here too for you guys. Uh, the Mercury retrograde may have really taken a toll on you. Um, there, there may be a lot of things coming to light in regards to the way that you communicate and the way that you communicate your needs and your desires with other people. That's definitely coming to the forefront and your intuition is trying to guide you to the best possible outcome in this. And that's going to be by recognizing your own emotions, your own feelings, your own thoughts, instead of expecting other people to recognize them for you. Wow. Okay. So our next cards here are going to be taking us a little deeper into what you're not seeing and what your intuition wants you to know and how that may be being communicated to you at this time. And then we'll get into our tarot. So let's go ahead here. We have addicted coming out. Um, for group number one. So again, this is like a codependent kind of energy, like being, I, I feel like you guys are, when, when you're addicted to something, um, regardless of whether it's a physical substance or a lifestyle or a person or whatever it is, it's very repetitive, right? There's very repetitive energy here. And I feel like your intuition is trying to show you that you are stuck in a loop. You are stuck in a cycle. You are stuck in a bubble that is keeping you very codependent on 
other people, codependent on other people's actions, codependent on other people's um, validation even for some of you guys and your intuitions coming forth here to try to lead you out of this cycle, to try to lead you towards the energies that will help you break free from this. A lot of you guys too, 10th house energies may be playing a big role or Saturn energies may be playing a big role, Saturn returns. You may be coming to a point in your life where you're recognizing that you have... experienced a lot of karmic situations, a lot of karmic relationships. So um, your your um, planetary placements and things like that right now may be bringing forth some messages for you in regards to how to break free from certain karmic relationships um, or certain codependencies. Wow. Okay. So we also have here Raziel, and this is Angel of Mysteries coming forth here. And this is saying that there is a fear of the unknown. Your intuition is acknowledging that you guys may have this mindset where you have to be able to see very clearly. You have to be able to know what's coming. You have to be able to recognize energies and things like this. Like there's a, a huge desire here, a huge need almost, and may very well play into these cycles or these codependencies that you guys are breaking free from where you won't go outside of your comfort zone. Okay. As I was talking about before, this inability to see things a different way, inability to communicate things a different way, and this expectation that other people are going to see what you need and what you expect and, and respect that. Um, there's a need to go outside of your comfort zone here, and that's really what your intuition is coming forth to say. There's a need to go outside of your comfort zone in regards to connections that you have and expectations that you have. Um, we also have here Gian, the maid, guardian of saints, humility, disillusionment, and champion. So you guys are being asked to be your own champion at this point in time and like stop expecting other people to come in and save you or stop expecting other people to come in and do exactly what you feel like they should do without you communicating your wants or your needs with them, regardless of what kind of relationship this is. I feel a lot of you guys, this definitely has to do with the way that you connect to other people but it has more so to do with the expectations that you place on other people and what you feel like they should just automatically know or do or see about you without you having to say or, you know, um, voice these things. And I feel, group number one, that a big reason why you um, kind of resist saying these things out loud or admitting what you need is out of this fear of making it real, this fear of self-recognition. There's a fear of self-recognition coming in here that your intuition is trying to lead you towards healing for. Um, so connecting to your intuition, really following any astrological placements or any kind of zodiac readings or any um, energies like that, really studying those energies at this point in time is really going to help you um, connect deeper to your intuition because it's like you guys are going to feel certain energies that are connected to planetary energies and your intuition is also guiding you towards those planetary energies um, to in order to work with them instead of against them. So if you guys are being led to kind of pull back from a certain relationship or to communicate in a different way, see if Mercury's retrograde, if you guys are, um, you know, recognizing that the same thing keeps happening over and over again in certain relationships. See kind of um, how Saturn may be playing a role. If you guys find yourself wanting to rebel against certain ways of being in relationships, see where Uranus is playing a role. If you find yourself being very attracted to certain people or energy, see where Venus is playing a role or where Venus is placed at. Um, so things like that, really getting in tune with what you're feeling drawn to and what you're feeling um, that you want to do and what you don't want to do and then seeing what planets are kind of supporting those energies that you're feeling because I feel like that's how your intuition is trying to guide you like your intuition is pushing you towards recognizing certain planetary energies which is very interesting some of you guys may even do like ceremony or spell work or witchcraft or anything like that and harnessing planetary energies for your your workings may be very beneficial for you at this time as well uh, let's go ahead and get you guys some tarot for group number one. 
group number one uh, being asked to step outside of your comfort zone in relationships in particular. But let's go ahead and get some tarot and go a little deeper into what your intuition wants you to know. We have the four of rods coming out here. So there's something that needs to be celebrated here. There's some sort of party of event um, of celebration. Some of you guys, this could be your birthday. As I brought up the Saturn return, you could be expecting people to do something very extravagant or um, exciting and, and do this for you for your birthday or expecting people to celebrate you or support you in some specific way. Um, and your intuition is coming forth saying to, to do this for yourself with this two, 27 here. Um, this boils down to the number nine in numerology. And I'm really getting the sense of needing to be self-sufficient um, and to support yourself in the way that you want other people to do so. So really taking control of self instead of expecting other people to do things for you, doing them for yourself and then watching how that aligns you to the people that will match that energy, watching how that aligns you to connections that will treat you the same way that you treat yourself. Now, this isn't about, you know, if you've experienced a lot of traumatic or abusive relationships, this isn't saying that you abuse yourself um, or that you've put yourself in these positions because, you know, terrible things happen. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that everybody that is seeking guidance through tarot readings or spirituality has experienced a lot of very traumatic, negative things in life um, in, in some way, shape, or form. I think everybody on this planet has experienced that. And, and, you know, that doesn't mean that we deserved it or that we asked for it or that we put ourselves in that position because of the law of attraction or because, uh, you know, you attract what you are or things like that. Because um, in a sense, we do attract what we are, but it happens in a very different way than just it's it's a lot more complex than just saying we attract what we are and that's why i attracted this abusive relationship um no we maybe don't feel worthy of love and that may play a role as to why we put ourselves in positions or in relationships why we allow ourselves to stay in relationships like that but not because we deserve that or because we attracted that because we are that but because of the way we feel about ourselves we accept those things um I hope that makes sense. Anyways, um, let's get some more cards for you guys, group number one, and go a little deeper into what your intuition wants you to know. There is something that is worth celebrating here. I just have to say this. Group number one, your intuition is saying celebrate. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate your accomplishments. Um, some of you guys, this may be about marriage or wanting to get married or even expecting somebody to propose to you. Um, there's something here about celebrating, celebrating how far you've come, celebrating the foundation that you've laid, um, but not expecting other people to see all the work that you've done. Um, because maybe a lot of it has been behind the scenes, especially with this humility and this disillusionment, disillusionment here. There's something here where you're expecting people to see things that they aren't able to. Um, and then we have the hanged man coming out. Uh, and yeah, this is definitely about widening your perspective, about allowing yourself to see change differently, allowing yourself to see your how your independence um, can bring you power instead of loneliness. I feel group number one that you guys may have a hard time being alone with yourself or you may see... Um, being single as a very lonely experience or um, there's something here about reclaiming your independence group number one um, there really is and I feel like that's really what your intuition is trying to lead you towards um, independence in regards to any kind of codependency can, codependencies that you have um, whether this is expecting other people to um, kind of succumb to the needs of yourself or whether this is substance abuse or uh, usage or codependency on a particular lifestyle, not allowing yourself to go outside of your comfort zone, um, whatever it is that you're really stuck on, your intuition is trying to lead you towards freedom with this, um, surrendering to the fact that change isn't always a negative thing, group number one.
seeing the positive side of things may also be something that you guys need to really work with. Um, working with gratitude, working on seeing the, the plus side or the positivity in certain situations. Um, we also have here the Four of Blades. Yeah, allowing yourself to really come out of this mental space that has kept you locked in a specific perspective there some of you guys may need to work with meditation um working with definitely any kind of limiting beliefs or thought patterns that keep you stuck on a specific idea or pers perspective and what i mean by this is the things that you tell yourself over and over again becoming aware of the thoughts that are repeating becoming aware of the statements that you tell yourself or the way that you treat yourself internally really becoming very aware of that and seeing how that is keeping you stuck in a cycle in your environment or in certain relationships because of a belief system that you have instilled within yourself um because we all have the the inner dialogue we all have that voice inside of us that tells us that the worst possible thing is going to happen or that tells us that if we share how we really feel or what we really need this person's going to reject us or that we need this particular substance or this particular drink um, in order to feel good when in reality we're using that so that we don't feel um, so it's kind of that energy that your intuition is coming forth to say like you really need to become aware of the thoughts that are driving your actions, the thoughts that are driving your expectations, and the thoughts that are driving your codependencies. Um, we all have codependencies, so don't let that trigger you or make you feel lesser than. We all are codependent in different ways, um, some of us more severe than others, some of us on different ways of being, but it, we all get stuck in loops. We all get stuck in patterns and in cycles. That's part of life is the karmic cycles are how we learn. Um, and that's really what I'm feeling here, group number one. So if you guys have been wondering like why you can't get out of a certain situation or why the same kinds of situations or same kinds of relationships keep repeating in your life, it's because there is a karmic lesson that you are meant to be learning about this and you are meant to be learning it in a bunch of different perspectives, okay? And that's why it's continuing to repeat in slightly different ways so that you can see it from slightly different ways. Um, our next card here is the Six of Coins and this is about balance. This is about reclaiming your power, reclaiming yourself, um, balancing the scales. This is about, this is kind of that Libra energy coming in here again, um, the fairness, the equality, um, treating other people how you want to be treated or um, that kind of energy coming in here. And then we also have the Knight of Blades and the seven of elixirs so group number one i feel like with this knight of blades here this is saying that you guys are very quick to jump to conclusions um very quick to jump to believing certain outcomes without actually experiencing the conversation or the situation it's like you guys complete it in your mind and believe that that's the only way that things are going to turn out or the only possibility that there is in regards to the way that things can turn out or the way that relationships can be or this person's reaction can only be this one way because i played this conversation in my head and i saw how it went and this is the only way that it can happen and your intuition is trying to to open you up, trying to get you to see outside of this restrictive perspective that you guys are in, group number one. And that leads us to the seven of elixirs. And this is all about this disillusionment, this confusion, this inability to see um, because your, your judgment is clouded by fear of the unknown. Here, group number one, your judgment is clouded by fear of change or by um, fear of rejection, fear of not feeling accepted here. It's like you guys um, don't allow yourself to fully commit to something because you already believe that it can only end in one way. Um, 
Okay, so your intuition is coming forth here, group number one, really for healing, to lead you to healing. Um, so if you've been, you know, questioning life, questioning certain situations, questioning your lifestyle, questioning your habits, your patterns, your routines, questioning your relationships, it's because your intuition is starting to kind of break through to the surface. Um, and, and you guys are being asked to really dive deep into your subconscious patterning and see why it is that you're so scared of commitment, but also so scared of change at the same time. And how are those playing off of each other? Um, and we have the three of rods coming out here. And this is saying that there is a path opening up. Your intuition is leading you towards a path, but your hesitation keeps you from seeing it. This hesitation to look in a new direction keeps you from seeing the way out of these cycles. And then we have the king of blades coming out here. And this is the need to make a decision here. This need to be very strict on yourself. Group number one, your intuition is saying it's time to take control of yourself, make a decision, and hold yourself accountable to this decision that you've made and follow through with the commitment, with the promise of what you said you're going to do um, in regards to your healing, in regards to your relationships, in regards to conversations that maybe need to ha you may need to have. I feel group number one that you guys are being very led to have some sort of conversation or even apologize or maybe, um, you know, just express how certain things maybe made you feel or how they maybe hurt your feelings um, and allow that to unfold the way that it needs to instead of making yourself believe that you already know how it will unfold so you don't need to take that step. Um, and then we have the two of coins and this is you guys going back and forth but again this decision that needs to be made. Um, choosing your heart instead of your mind here, group number one, is going to be very significant. Allowing yourself to open up in the heart space instead of so mentally, being so mentally driven. There's a lot of mental energy coming in here, group number one. The mental dialogue, the the need to really relax the mind and come into the emotions, come into the ability to feel clearly to your intuition is leading you to find what emotions you are covering up with this internal dialogue um i hope that makes sense for you guys group number one so let's go ahead here and i'm going to pull a couple last messages from your intuition what your intuition wants you to know um, any last guidance or advice and our first one here we have in the end you tried and you cared and sometimes that is enough yes group number one your intuition is leading you to just try to you know follow through with the commitments that you've made to try to have that conversation to try to break free from your comfort zone to step into the unknown um, admit that you do care um, and and know that you are enough and and even what you've done up until now is enough but if you want more you have to try for more group number one um, let's go ahead and pull you one final message. So even if you guys are super scared about somebody leaving or somebody being angry or upset with you, if you say what you need to say or however that resonates for you, it's in the end you tried. In the end you did what you had to do for your own peace of mind, for your own healing. Um, even if it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to turn out, that's okay. That just means there's something better for you after that, after you heal, after you move forward, after you step out of this cycle. Um, let's get one final message for group number one from their intuition. One final message. Okay. And here we have be impeccable with your word. So only saying the things that you mean, only saying what is true um, for you and about your feelings and, and things like that. And we have released the need to be right. Um, so not arguing, not believing that um, you are going to be right regardless of 
if you have this conversation or not or whatever this is for you. Um, and the message here says, when you believe something, you assume you are right and you may even destroy relationships in order to defend your position. Let go of the need to defend your position, group number one. How perfect is that? So that is the message that is coming through from your intuition. Um, I really hope that this reading resonated with you and brought you value. If it did, please hit that like button, comment down below. Let me know if you chose this pile. Let me know what other kinds of videos you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number two. Those of you that chose pile number two, this reading is for you and we are looking at what your intuition is saying, what your intuition wants you to know. So starting off here for you guys, I have shuffled out most of the oracle cards and um, we are going to work our way through these and then we'll get into the tarot and I'll shuffle those out as we go. But starting off here, this is the image that you guys chose. Um, and coming into your reading, there is a sense of an inability to find common ground. Um, there is like this overwhelming need to prove yourself or for people to take your side or to be right coming in here in some way, shape or form. And what I'm getting here for group number two is like this sense of feeling threatened, feeling threatened of losing somebody or something or feeling threatened of uh, like loss of power or feeling like um, threatened because if you admit that you're wrong or that um, maybe you saw things in a different way that there will be some sort of like guilt or shame um, surrounding this and what this is causing here group number two is like this sense uh I, i'm seeing this as the moon card there is this fear that is causing you to transform into your animal instincts this fight or flight this inability to compromise this inability to find common ground but instead only seeing uh, you know, the threats that are around or um, running away and just letting everything go. Interesting. So let's go ahead here, group number two, and get into your cards. We're going to start off here, first of all, by looking at uh, a good way for you to connect to your intuition. We have Guardian. Um, so there is a huge sense of the ego coming in here, your intuition wanting you to recognize your ego, wanting you to heal your ego, wanting you to understand your ego. Um, and this isn't just because it's toxic or because of narcissism or anything like that. We all have an ego and the ego isn't always bad. The ego is our guardian. The ego shows us what we do like and what we don't like. The ego is our protection. The ego... Um, you know, really has a lot to do with our personality and who we become in this life. And group number two, what I'm really seeing here is working with your ego, working with your inner child and your divine masculine, like those energies coming forth here very strongly to find why it is that you feel so unsafe. Um, so group number two, a big message coming in here from your intuition is learning how to feel safe, learning how to step outside of that survival instinct, outside of that fight or flight energy. Um, so recognizing what is causing you to be in that energy is going to play a big role in this, whether it's you and your need to be right or your need to prove yourself or your need for other people to choose you or to choose your side or whether this is some sort of you know other situation for you as this is going to resonate differently for everybody this is a general reading but definitely finding what it is that causes you to push yourself into that survival mode into that feeling of being threatened by loss or that feeling of being threatened by being wrong or whatever it is for you, really getting to the core of what causes that. So your triggers, group number two, your intuition is coming forth to kind of present some triggers for you to be able to learn how to feel safe within yourself instead of feeling like you need to overly assert yourself or feeling like you need to run away. Um, 
or even freeze. For some of you guys, this could be about the fact that you freeze in situations that make you feel threatened. Um, let's take a look at what you need to be mindful of. Group number two, we have Vervain Everlasting, Spellbound, Soul Alignment, Release, and Protection. Yeah, there's a huge need here. Um, to be able to feel safe, a huge need to be able to feel grounded, a huge need to be able to distinguish between a threat and like a conflict or a compromise. Um, I feel like group number two, you guys may have a hard time compromising or a hard time seeing things in other people's point of view. Um, there's like this kind of example coming through here is coming through in a religious sense where um, people being very, very religious and very, very, you know, um, passionate about their religion, that's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful to believe in something. It's beautiful to, to feel that. But it becomes toxic when you believe that that's the only thing that other people should believe in or that that's the only thing that is right. Um, and it's kind of this kind of energy that is coming forth that your intuition wants you to recognize where this is at for you in your life and how that throws you out of balance, how that throws you into this survival mode and how that is connected to your ego. What is it that makes you feel safe? Group number two, um, really finding that and finding a safe space, finding even like a sacred space for you to do this work in, for you to connect to your intuition. There's something here about trying to make yourself feel safe by defending your point of view, by running, by being aggressive, um, that these kinds of energies coming forth that your intuition really wants you to become aware of and to release, um, allowing yourself to connect to other perspectives, to other information, even if this is with a person, okay, um, or a religion, as I was talking about earlier, if you have 10 people in a room with 10 different religions, um, and you believe that yours is the only one that's right, that yours is the only one that people should believe in, and because of that, you don't allow yourself to learn anything about the other nine um, religions, you're losing out on information that could help you even in your own religion or your own perspectives, that could help you grow, that could help you understand where they come from, that could help you connect to other people even though you are different. There's something here about not being able to accept other people's differences in some way, shape, or form, and that being some sort of threat to you. Um, so let's go ahead, and these next three cards are going to show us a little bit deeper into what your intuition wants to talk about, and then we'll shuffle the tarot cards out as we go. So group number two, we have here, look at this, obsession, um, which is very connected to the ego, very connected to that kind of need to be right, that need for other people to see things and feel things the same way that you do. We also have here Had, and this is left leg, this is submission. So there is a need for give and take here in some way, shape, or form, group number two, that your intuition is coming forth here to really bring your awareness to it. Some of you guys, this has to do with allowing your, your feminine energy to be expressed, allowing yourself to become more gentle, allowing yourself to even become more submissive instead of aggressive. Some of you guys may really struggle with being aggressive and feeling like that's how you protect yourself, even when it's not a threat or a danger, okay? So there's a need to really get very clear on what is making you feel threatened, what is making you feel like you're in danger, what is making you feel like you have to protect yourself and is that really the case um, when you like look back at it in hindsight? Were you really in danger or was that just like your body's initial reaction because of past patterning to automatically go into the survival mode? Um, and then we also have Lilith, the thief of life, hunger, animalism, and instinct. Again, this is like the survival mode group number two. Your intuition really wants you to become aware of what pushes you into that and how that 
makes you become obsessive over certain things or even protective or aggressive about certain things group number two wow so this is definitely in regards to healing um allowing yourself to heal your ego your masculine your inner child allowing yourself to come into calmness allowing yourself to break free from the grips that your survival instincts have over you i feel group number two you guys may really struggle with a lot of stress a lot of anxiety a lot of even depression or um like overactive thoughts um I feel like you guys are constantly in this fight or flight mode and there is truly a need to work with this. Your intuition is saying there's there's a need for you to work with this, a need for you to heal this, and a need for you to become in more control of yourself instead of allowing this to overtake you. And I feel group number two, this has a lot to do with your past patterning, um, whether this was how you were raised, where you felt like you constantly had to protect yourself or you were constantly in danger, or um, maybe your parents or your guardians taught you that um, there's danger everywhere in some way shape or form by being like overprotective or maybe your parents caused you pain or trauma in some way shape or form or you just experienced a lot of situations in your life that you had to protect yourself in um, your intuition is saying that this part of your healing journey is currently present and there is a need to work through this healing in order for you to align to where you're meant to go next um let's get you guys some tarot group number two and go a little deeper into what your intuition wants you to know look at that we have the moon and that's exactly what i was feeling like there's this fear that is driving you guys this animal instinct this transformation of self when you are put in an uncomfortable situation when you are put in the unknown or in uh, groups of people where maybe you don't know anybody where you are put in stressful situations or high anxiety situations or high pressure situations it's like you transform into this other person as a form of protecting yourself and there is a need to heal this because it's super over overactive um, as well as like this obsession energy some of you guys may be very obsessive or very stuck on certain perspectives or ideas or like this need to be right or need for people to take your side or this need to prove yourself that may be a part of this kind of survival instinct that's coming forth that your intuition wants you to become aware of so you can start to see this patterning and when it comes forth okay um, and then we have the four of elixirs and this is morphine, heroin, cyanide, and arsenic group number two. This is about how you numb out your emotions with this adrenaline, with this survival instinct, with this these stress chemicals that cause you to be overly attentive to every possibility of danger outside of yourself without recognizing how it's damaging you internally. So a lot of inner child work. I feel group number two, your intuition wants you to to tune into a lot of inner child work, to tune into more playful energy, to allow yourself to play, to allow yourself to have fun. Um, and then we have the one of elixirs coming out here. Yeah, in order to open up your like emotional gateway here group number one there's something here where like tuning into your inner child is going to allow you to open back up those numbed out feelings or emotions that you've been trying to actually protect yourself from and it's been projected into your physical reality by protecting yourself from anything that may trigger those emotions or those feelings within you um, so you may find yourself being very defensive in situations where maybe you don't need to be or very overly aggressive or def um, like this need to be right or prove yourself or whatever it is for you and really those situations are just triggering certain emotions within you that you don't want to feel um, and you may not even recognize this as I do feel for group number two this has a lot to do with your childhood it has a lot to do with things that you numbed out a long time ago so maybe you don't even recognize that they're there anymore or recognize why you're doing certain things that you're doing um, and your intuition is trying to really show you why 
here in order to open your heart space back up in order to open your emotional body back up your emotional body is very closed off very restricted group number two and it really needs to open it really needs to be purged there's definitely something here about purging the emotional body so there's a need for you to be aware group number two that when you do this if you do this um, you are going to, it's going to be like a flood of emotions. You are going to feel all of those emotions that you haven't felt, that you haven't allowed yourself to feel. Um, and that can be very overwhelming and, and things like that to work through. But there's, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier when you're aware of what might happen or how it could happen. You could feel all of these emotions at once. You could go through a week or two or a month of crying, of <sighs> just feeling um, everything that you haven't allowed yourself to feel. Uh, so let's get some more cards. Then we have the Queen of Elixirs, and that's exactly what I was feeling here. It's like this flow of emotions, it, this purging in order for a steady flow to come in, and that's really what the Queen of Elixirs is all about. It's all about the steady flow of emotional energy, allowing your emotions to be there as they come instead of resisting them. Um, by resisting everything outside of you that causes those emotions to come to the surface. Group number two. And then we have the one of blades coming out. So there is... Um, some of you guys here, there is like this need to be right, whether this is true or not, um, coming forth here. And this is your intuition is saying that you have to find your truth you have to find the truth of yourself within and not from something or someone outside of yourself. Um, this is, your intuition is coming forth here for you to find the truth of yourself. Again, this kind of soul alignment trying to come in here um, on the other side of this purging, on the other side of this healing process, on the other side of your fear, on the other side of your survival mode um, is where you're going to find your truth group number two and that may be what you've been seeking but you haven't allowed yourself to go through this healing process so maybe you haven't found your truth yet or what that means for you um or there's a truth that some of you guys may need to accept like this truth of not feeling safe or this inability to feel safe and the truth of why that actually is group number two and that may require some soul searching you guys may be entering or be in currently a dark night of the soul um and a big part of this is seeking the truth of yourself seeking the truth of why you are the way you are why you feel the way you are why you do the things you do um regardless of how positive or negative you may perceive those things there's a need for accepting the truth of who you currently are in the present moment and how your life unfolded to this point um and then we have the seven of blades coming out here and this is yeah so we have the truth and then we have deceit in group number two i feel like this is you guys your intuition bringing forth this this message of how the truth of the matter is is that you you deny yourself certain emotions and you tell yourself you don't feel positive emotions or that it isn't possible to feel possible po positive emotions there's a darkness here group number two um again this dark night of the soul this this shadow energy this unknown energy a lot of you guys the truth of the matter is is that you you don't allow yourself to feel love you don't allow yourself to feel compassion or forgiveness um, maybe you've made yourself believe that those things don't actually exist or that love is pain and therefore you've been in relationships that only brought you pain because of this patterning that love is something other than what it actually is. Um, there's also some, some kind of substance numbing here for group number two. Some of you guys may drink. Um, and may need to kind of recognize the truth of that situation or accept that you have a problem for some of you guys. What do you use to numb your emotions, regardless of whether it's a substance or not? What do you use to numb your emotions and how can you accept that? 
um, in order to then heal group number two. Our next card here is the Hierophant. Yeah, so there's something here, group number two, where like you guys are really stuck on like specific rules or guidelines or traditions or habits or patterns that you have kind of created in your life as a form of protection to keep you safe. And you guys have been living by them for so long that maybe you don't even recognize that it's like that. This is very deep subconscious patterning that's coming forth here. Your intuition is wanting to talk about some very deep subconscious patterning and uh, habits and routines and ideals that you guys live by. Um, the Hierophant coming forth here also brings forth the sense of religion or your belief systems or traditions or things like that. And this is definitely about like the structure of your life and the way that you live your life in a way to avoid feeling, in a way to avoid anything that you may perceive as dangerous and it's happened for so long that there's so many things in your life that you perceive as dangerous group number two that you're just constantly in this state of survival um so you guys maybe f feel very drained or very low energy or very heavy um a lot of the time and this is why the the reason why is because you expend so much energy looking for the threat that isn't even their potentially group number two. So this is definitely about um, learning how to come out of this fight or flight mode, learning how to come out of this survival mode, um, learning how to see things differently, um, learning how to feel safe, finding what makes you feel safe, group number two. Um, working with the root chakra may be very beneficial for you guys. Then we have the two of coins here. So this is telling me that this is going to be a choice. Your intuition wants you to know that this is a choice that you have to make to step out of this or continue living this way. And the way you make that choice is by first accepting the truth that you do live in this energy, group number two. Um, if you don't accept that you live in this energy, then you'll never be able to make a different choice. If you do accept that you live in this energy, that opens up possibilities to live a different way. Um, but that's still going to have to be a choice that you make to change and to heal and to open your emotional energies and to kind of dig into some trauma even for some of you guys. Healing the inner child, healing the masculine energy, healing the ego. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, so group number two, you guys may be at a point in your life where a lot of things are changing around you and that may be really causing this to flare up, really causing you to recognize how you've been living or the structures that you've been living behind. Um, there may be people coming in or out of your life that are causing you to feel different things or forcing you to see different perspectives or bringing new information in that's causing you to question certain things there's just something coming in here that's really causing like a shake up in your life and this shake up is in order for you to be able to accept where you currently are in this fight or flight mode and how you've currently been living how you've lived why you've lived this way why you feel so unsafe and making a choice to either step into this change or not group number two so this is definitely your choice and and um a choice that maybe not all of you guys are ready to make and that's okay but becoming aware of it and bringing it to your awareness is going to help you here okay it's going to help you be more prepared for what the change is going to be like it's going to help you be more prepared for opening up that emotional body for seeing things in a different way so even if you're not ready to take that plunge or to make that change at least like if this reading is resonating with you at least you are recognizing where you are or why you feel the way that you feel or why certain things have happened the way that they've happened um, and sometimes you know that is healing all in itself 
let's go ahead here, group number two, and I'm going to pull you a couple last messages from your intuition. Any last guidance or advice that your intuition has for you at this time for group number two? What does your intuition want you to know for group number two? Hmm. Okay, there's two that want to come out here, and I'm not going to fight it. So our first one here is, look at this, life is tough, but so are you, group number two. How beautiful is that? And then we also have fall in love when you are ready, not when you are lonely. Um, so again, kind of bringing forth that energy of... Um, the the belief systems that you have around what love is supposed to be or maybe you were raised where you saw that love was something that caused pain in some way shape or form and because of that patterning because of that belief because of that experience you've lived in that way um and and your intuition wants to bring that to light for you let's go ahead and pull you one final message from your intuition group number two one final message um, from your intuition here. We have always do your best and don't overdo. And the message here on this card says always do your best but don't overdo. When you overdo, you deplete your body and go against yourself and it will take you longer to accomplish your goal. So your intuition is wanting you to know that when you obsess when you overdo when you overreact when you over anything you are harming yourself um in some way shape or form or you're delaying your your growth you are depleting your energy um and and there's a need to become aware of that when you become aggressive or when you you know become obsessed with needing to be right or needing to prove yourself or anything like that it's it's it then becomes self sabotage um and it pushes you into that survival mode. So becoming aware of that and where you feel like you need to overdo things and how that pushes you into the fear and pushes you into the fight or flight mode and how that kind of chain reaction occurs, group number two. But this is what I am seeing for you guys. Uh, if this reading resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button. Comment down below. Let me know how it resonated. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number three. Those of you that chose pile number three, this is what your intuition wants you to know at the time that you're watching this video. And we are going to start off here with these cards, and then I will shuffle the tarot out as we go. Starting off here, the symbol, the image that you guys chose, um coming forth here for you guys. I feel like this is a lot about um, fragmented energy for group number three. A lot of um, procrastination as well coming through here, being pretty loud at group number three. There's something here about maybe, you know, consciously being aware that something needs to change or that you need to take action somewhere in your life, but then finding reasons or excuses as to why you can't do these certain things or why you can't accomplish certain goals using the fact that maybe you don't have the knowledge or the information you need to, to attain it as an excuse, but then not allowing yourself to actually obtain the information or the knowledge or the skills that you need to do so. So there's something here, group number three, with procrastination, with fragmenting yourself, and even maybe some self-sabotage energies that maybe you aren't aware of or aware of the way that they are playing out. So if you're finding yourself feeling very stuck in certain parts of your life or in certain relationships, I feel like this has a lot to do with it. And your intuition is coming forth to help guide the way when you can't see clearly where the path is at. Um, so definitely... I feel like a big message for you guys is becoming more aware of where you're procrastinating or where you're making yourself believe that you can't accomplish something um, and why you're telling yourself you can't accomplish that. Is it because you don't have the resources that you need, the information that you need, the time that you need, um, the energy that you need, and then how can you obtain those things? 
uh, group number three, even though it may be difficult, it may be out of your comfort zone, you definitely can obtain those things in one way or another that's going to help you move towards your goals um, and away from the fear. I feel like there's a fear of abandonment, a fear of loss, a fear of not being good enough or not doing a good enough job or a fear of even learning here, a fear of trying to learn or to practice a certain skill or obtain certain information because maybe you're scared that you won't do it right or maybe you're scared that you won't be perfect at it or you won't be as good as somebody or something else. Um, I feel like that energy really holds you back. Group number three and your intuition is bringing this forth for you to become more aware of what is holding you back. Uh, so let's take a look at the best way for you to connect to your intuition here. Look at this. We have Conjure. So group number three, I feel like your intuition is very strongly calling you to go after certain things and to, to call certain things in. Um, and this is kind of why your intuition is coming forth to speak to you today in this video, I feel, because you are... It's almost like you are working against your intuition out of the fear of the things that you have to do to accomplish what your intuition is leading you towards. I hope that makes sense. Um, so connecting with your intuition, group number three, a big part of that for you guys is going to be working with the law of attraction, working with spell work, ceremony, ritual, um, setting intentions, um, and really allowing your intuition to guide the goals and the accomplishments that you need to achieve, trusting the things that you need to achieve, even if they aren't something that you feel you would necessarily want or desire. It's like trusting your intuition because you're going to need that skill or that thing in order to get to what it is you do truly desire. So there's something here about the steps to get to what you actually want and your intuition leading you to like different stepping stones here and you resisting them because they feel or they look like they are out of your way. They look like they are leading you astray even for some of you guys. So there's a need for trust here, really trusting your intuition and allowing your intuition to take you where you need to go in order to obtain the bigger goal here, group number three, um, but really tuning into meditations, to working with the law of attraction, setting intentions, any kind of ritual, spell work, ceremony, anything like that. I feel group number three, you guys may be much more spiritual beings than um, a lot of the other people that chose different piles in this reading. And if that's the case here, like in order to tune into your intuition, there is a need to dive deeper into your spirituality. Even if you haven't done that yet, um, in order to deeply connect to your intuition, there's a need to dive deeper into the mysticism, into the unknown, into the spirituality, into learning about these things for you guys. So let's see what you should be on the lookout for or be aware of here. We have mantra, medicine, command, song, incantation, and containment. Group number three, you guys contain a lot of your intuition. You you restrict a lot of your intuition. It's like you guys you guys can hear and feel and and see your intuition and what it's telling you but it's like you guys only allow yourself to follow it to an extent you only allow yourself to do what's comfortable or what you agree with instead of trusting it so there's a big message here that your intuition is desiring trust group number three So let's go ahead here and we are going to take a look at these three cards and go a little deeper into what your intuition wants to talk to you about and then we will shuffle the tarot out after that. So group number three, our first card here is Triumph of Lies. So again, I'm really getting this energy of you guys maybe procrastinating or using certain excuses or certain... It's almost like skating around the truth as to why you can't accomplish certain things. You've you've successfully accomplished making yourself believe you can't obtain bigger things because you can't 
move through the stepping stones, when your intuition is leading you towards the stepping stones that you need in order to get to the bigger picture, you've made yourself believe you aren't capable of obtaining what you need to obtain to get to the stepping stones or through the stepping stones. So again, it's like the sense of self-sabotage, the sense of working against yourself, um, making yourself believe that you aren't capable because you don't have the time, money, resources, energy to do what needs to be done in order to obtain certain things. Um, like I can't get that job because I don't have a degree while you don't allow yourself to study or you don't allow yourself to go to school or you don't allow yourself to practice the skills that you need to practice um, by making yourself again believe that there are things that are more important than doing that. It's like a spiral effect coming out here. Group number three, we also have here uh, Israfel, and this is Angel of Song. There's something here with sound, frequency, vibration, group number three, that your intuition wants you to be aware of. Um, I feel like group number three, your intuition is saying what you say is what comes true for you. Um, so you guys may have a very active kind of throat chakra at this point in time, manifesting with your words. Um, so really your intuition wants you to become very aware of the intentions, the emotions, the ideas that you have behind the words that you're speaking. Um, because it's like even when you say you don't have enough time to study this thing, what you're actually meaning is that you don't think you're capable of learning it good enough to be able to proceed. And because of that, it's like you are manifesting your own reality right now, group number three. So there's a huge need to be aware of what you're speaking and why you're saying it and how that is actually creating your reality that you're living by keeping you stagnant, by keeping you from the things that you actually truly desire. Um, and if that's the case for you, if that resonates with you, there's a big need to start speaking more positively, to start telling yourself that you can achieve this, to, to start speaking what you desire into reality instead of speaking what you can't do or what you don't want or however that resonates for you. And we also have here the matriarch, mother of homestead, rejection, opportunities, consequences. So group number three, there is a big energy here of like the consequences of your words. Um, so some of you guys may be dealing with consequences of something that you have said previously that maybe you said you didn't want it or maybe you said you couldn't have it or um, maybe you said something to a partner or in a certain relationship that kind of backfired on you um, out of your own fear of abandonment or rejection. Um, maybe you guys live in a certain kind of internal state where you believe that abandonment and rejection are inevitable and therefore kind of create that outside of yourself so that you can prove yourself right. Um, even if it's subconsciously, I don't feel like you guys are consciously being like, well, I'm going to make this person leave because it's going to happen eventually anyways. But the actions that you take by saying you want to be in this relationship, but then physically pulling away, um, it's kind of like where your words and your actions aren't matching each other here. And you are creating, um, like this disconnect of self as well. Um, and the self-sabotage and this kind of procrastination energy are all coming, stemming from these things, what you are saying and what you are doing and how they don't match with each other because of the internal state of self and how you actually feel about certain things or how you actually feel about yourself and your abilities. Group number three, I hope that makes sense for you. So let's go ahead and pull some tarot for you guys and go a little deeper into this um, and see what else your intuition wants you to know. Group number three, our first card out is judgment. Um, yeah, so there is a huge need to let go of procrastination, to let go of judgment, to let go of control group number three there's a need to let go of control a need to surrender to change a need to allow yourself to do things that maybe you have told yourself you aren't capable of a need to try there's a need to try here um and we have strength wow um so group number three, there's something here about facing 
your fears with grace, facing what you believe to be impossible with courage and with grace and with this determination. So willpower, your intuition is coming forth here, group number three, to really get you to activate your willpower, for you to tune into your willpower and the self-control and self-discipline energy to kind of force yourself to move through the things that you need to do that you've convinced yourself you aren't capable of or that are impossible. There's something here about moving through the impossible, group number three. And then we have the page of Elixir eternal youth coming out here some of you guys may be a parent or a guardian um, and if that's the case for you there's a need for you to kind of tune into the fact that what you believe you are capable of is what your children are going to believe they are capable of so if you are living in a way where you have convinced yourself and everybody around you that you can't do certain things and that you aren't capable there's a need to know that you're also teaching your children to live in that mindset um, even, you know, if you don't realize it or even if you don't say it out loud, if you're holding yourself back, your children will inevitably hold themselves back. Um, and that message may not be for everybody here, but that is definitely meant for somebody here. So do the things, face things with the courage and the strength and the willpower that you want your kids to, to live with. Um, embrace the energy that you want your kids to face life with, that you want them to face their fears with, group number three. Even if you don't have kids, um, just, you know, imagine if you did, if you did have children, how would you want them to live their life? You would want them to do anything they wanted to and, and make them believe that they could do anything that they put their minds to. Well, in order to make them believe that, you have to live that life. Um, people don't, it's, it's kind of like the do as I say, not as I do kind of energy coming in here where you have to actually do what you say or your children are going to do what you do and not what you say, if what you say and what you do are two different things. I really hope that makes sense. Um, our next card here is the One of Coins or the Ace of Pentacles in the original tarot. And this is saying that there are opportunities for growth. There is a seed being planted. This is the intention behind the things that you're doing. What are you intending to accomplish or what are you intending to do here, group number three? If you are saying that you aren't capable of doing something but then trying to prove that you are right, then you inevitably will, won't be able to accomplish something. Um, so there's there's just a huge message here. Your intuition wants you to be aware of what you say and what you do and making those things match with each other so that you aren't fighting against yourself um, or separating yourself or fragmenting your energy. Um, and there's also like new opportunities for growth, new opportunities for some of you guys may be receiving some sort of gift or some sort of resource, resource or energy that's going to kind of motivate you to go after something that maybe you've been scared of up until now. Um, it's like whatever you've been telling yourself you didn't have enough of in order to do something it, that is coming in for you guys. It's like somebody is bringing you a present or a gift or even a message for some of you guys. There may be a message coming in that's going to allow you to face something here. Um, And we have the two of rods coming out. And this is that hesitation, group number three. Your intuition wants you to be aware of the hesitation and how in that split second of hesitation is where you are going to make that decision that you can or you can't. Um, so it's it's almost like your intuition is wanting you to become aware of the in-between, especially with this judgment here, like wanting you to become aware of these split seconds that create the consequences to your actions. These split seconds that cause you to hesitate or to rethink what you're doing, that cause you to go backwards, that cause you to revert back to the old ways or that cause you to go back to where you started from, group number three. Um... And then we have the sun coming out right on top of the page of elixirs. There's definitely something here with children or the inner child coming forth, group number three, that your intuition wants you to be aware of and how maybe you lost that excitement for life. Um, but that there is like this potential coming forth, this potential for growth, this potential for 
expansion for success and for wealth for recognition um if you can allow yourself to find that excitement that passion for life there's something here about needing to reignite some sort of passion for living for moving um maybe you guys lost like your will to live if you will um because of some sort of failure failure or some sort of loss and um there's also something here about the, the matriarch, the mother energy coming forth. Some of you guys may have lost a mother, um, and if that's the case, it's like that energy is coming forth to cheer you on. Um, but with the sun here, like there's a need to find pleasure, there's a need to find joy, there's a need to find excitement in your life and, f and chase those things. Don't allow yourself to hesitate, don't allow yourself to tell you that you don't deserve these things or that they aren't taking you anywhere. Um, especially if you've been trying to manifest more happiness and joy into your life, but then you resist it when the opportunity comes your way. There's a huge need to be aware of what you're manifesting and what you're resisting, what you're saying versus what you're doing, these kinds of energies. You're intuition really wants you to become aware of and then we have the five of rod, rods coming in here some of you guys may need like some healthy competition here like um somebody that challenges you in a way that makes you keep trying to be better instead of being challenged to the extent where you believe that you've been defeated um some of you guys too may look at competition or um this kind of energy as it only a negative thing or looking at it like you have to prove yourself or like you have to be better and when you're not better then you've just lost or you've been defeated and that um you can't go any further than where you made it to and that's not necessarily the case there's something here group number three where you guys are being asked to um, stop comparing yourself to others stop competing with others just to be the best but to compete with other people out of funds could be like competitive st sports or um, some sort of game or like board game or something like this that really wants to come in for you guys to bring you into that kind of inner child energy where maybe you can compete and you you I, regardless of whether you win or lose there's something here about the the fun of the game the joy of life the pleasure of connecting with other people and for some of you guys this is about learning from other people learning from people that are better than you allowing people that are better than you to inspire you and show you that what is possible show you that you can achieve more to motivate you not to hold you back um, and then we have the moon. So we have the sun and the moon here. And there's definitely like this energy of, um, mother and father, child, family like energy here, which is very interesting. Um, coming forth for group number three, the, <sighs> There's something here about like somebody watching you. Some of you guys, this could be kids watching you, watching every move you make, um, learning, growing, expanding as they learn how to live life from you, from their guardians. Some of you guys, this is like a paranoia kind of energy coming through here where maybe you feel like people are constantly watching you or waiting for you to fail or waiting for you to fall on your face. And if that's the case, it's like that that fear is what is holding you back from trying um so there's a need to work with that and then we have the queen of coins luxury comfort um abundance prosperity creativity group number three you guys are meant to create something very abundant whether this is a family or a job or a creative project or some sort of competition or that maybe you're supposed to win or whatever it is is that's going to be different for everybody here there's something here about the willpower to gain the necessary skills and knowledge and and these kinds of things in order to obtain it and it's going to be so comforting so beautiful once you do but you really have to allow yourself to go through the growing process to experience the growing pains group number three so your intuition is coming forth here saying that there are growing pains that you have to face that you have to allow yourself to go through and experience in order to obtain this success here um, in order for you to achieve happiness joy success wealth 
um, physical healing for some of you guys coming through here. This could be like physical therapy. Some of you guys may be having a very difficult time with like your physical body or making your physical body do the things that you want it to do in some aspect or another. And there is a healing coming in here that your intuition wants you to work towards. But in order to work towards that, you have to go through the growing pains. You have to do the exercise. You have to change the diet. You have to do the hard things in order to get to the comfort Okay, so however that resonates for you in your life, in your situation, you have to do the hard things. You have to learn. You have to experience. You have to fail. You have to allow people to see you go through this process um, because you guys are teaching others around you, whether it's children or friends or family. You guys are like a role model for somebody or even a group of people around you, and people will learn from the things that you do. So don't be scared of doing them because people are watching you, but but you do them because people are watching you because not only will you help yourself but you will help everybody else around you too group number three so let's go ahead i'm going to pull you guys a couple last messages from your intuition any last guidance or advice anything else your intuition wants you to know at this time our first message out here is you will meet your soulmate when the time is right um, so you guys may be really trying to manifest love or a soulmate or even trying to reconcile with somebody at this point in time, but um, your intuition and spirit is coming through here saying you have to find the willpower to heal yourself, to go after your own success and your own dreams and go through the growing pains and things like this before you are at the right vibration for the people that you are meant to come into contact with, group number three. Um, some of you guys may even be looking for like a soul family. Um, or somebody to have a family with, um, that kind of thing. And it's, family is coming up here very strongly for you guys. You guys may really want a family. You may really want to settle down and have a family and be a mother or a father or a parent, a guardian of some sort. Um, and and your, your guides are coming through here saying you are manifesting this. It is coming, but there are things you have to go through, hurdles you have to jump, things you have to learn, um, and things you have to heal and you know, fears you have to face in order for this to align in the best way possible for you, okay? There's two of these that want to come out here, so I'm going to take them both. Our first one is don't take anything personally. Release self-judgment, group number three. Our first card out here was the Major Arcana with judgment. Release self-judgment. Um, and the message on this card here says, even the opinions you have about yourself are not necessarily true. Therefore, you don't need to take whatever you hear in your own mind personally. Um, so really working with that energy, I feel would be so beneficial for you guys, especially if you believe that you can't obtain certain things or do certain things because there are obstacles in the way. And we next have don't take anything personally, relinquish self-importance. And the message on this card here says personal importance or taking things personally is the maximum expression of selfishness because we make the assumption that everything is about me. So with that group number three, there's like something here where maybe because you failed or because you didn't get first place or because um, you didn't accomplish something in the way that you wanted to or because somebody may have offered you some sort of opinion or advice or criticism, it's like you took it as a personal attack and used that as a reason as to why you can't go after certain things. Regardless of where or when this happened for you in your life, it has created a habit, a pattern of this fear of failure, this fear of the growing process, this fear of the growing pains. And you guys are being asked to push through that. Your intuition is leading you to heal and push through this in order to get to your manifestations on the other side of abundance, of luxury, of creativity, of fertility. There's a lot of growth, a lot of success, wealth, and happiness coming for you guys on the other side of these like growing pains. So this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number three. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button, comment down below. Let me know how it resonated. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. 
Hello, my beautiful group number four. Those of you that chose pile number four, this reading is for you. And we are looking at what your intuition is trying to say, what your intuition wants you to know. So we are going to work our way through these cards here, and then we will shuffle the tarot out as we go. So group number four, starting off here, this is the image that you guys chose. Um, and, and something that I'm really getting here, group number four, is something about controlling the way other people see you controlling the way you want other people to see you for some of you guys this could be something that is happening to you in some sort of relationship or connection that you have where maybe there is somebody around you that's trying to control the way you see them but I do feel that this is more of a a personal like internal energy coming through here especially with this being messages from our intuition there is something here about needing people to see you in some sort of specific light like needing people to see you as the good person needing people to see you as the good guy needing people to see you as kind as generous as um, these kinds of things when maybe the reason why you're doing certain things is to obtain certain kind of alter ulterior motives or like for personal gain by and and it's almost like doing things for personal gain and masking them with um kind of a different it's almost like this illusion here group number four there's it's like <sighs> I'm not even quite sure how to articulate this, but it's like doing something for yourself and masking it as doing something for the greater good or for charity or um, to be seen as the good guy or the good person, um, something like this, but covering up like selfish motives. Um, this is doing certain things and saying that you're doing it out of the kindness of your heart, um, but maybe using every opportunity after that to strike guilt into the other the receiving person or people of that um action by um you know letting them know that you didn't have to do this or um by telling them how much it costs you or what it did or um making them feel bad for what you did for them even if maybe they didn't ask you to do it for them this is um, using every opportunity after you've done something for somebody to bring it up or waiting for an opportunity to use guilt or shame as a way to try to get something in return for the acts that you have completed. Um, interesting. So some of you guys may be kind of subconsciously doing this um, in your life or you may be experiencing this from somebody else around you. Um, but your intuition wants to bring this to your awareness here. Uh, group number four, we are going to work our way through these cards. I'm going to take a look here at how you can best connect to your intuition or where your intuition um, can come through the strongest for you at this time. And we have kitchen magic. So group number four, there's definitely some like herbal energy is coming in here with this card right now some of you guys may really need to kind of work with like even I'm, I'm picking this up as like energy sensing working with energy sensing in order to learn how your intuition is communicating with you I feel like you guys sense certain energies and your intuition kind of translates those for you and the more in tune and aware of the energies that you're sensing that you can become the more aware you can become of your intuition I hope that makes sense what I mean by this is like working with different herbs say you know for for basic concept sake uh hold salt in your hand in your receptive hand so the hand that you don't write with or um most people it's going to be like their left hand but your your less dominant hand so your receptive hand not the hand that you put things out with or create with the most but the opposite hold salt or any kind of herb that maybe you're working with a lot in that hand and just kind of meditate with it and feel the energies and allow yourself to see any images or visions or thoughts or feelings that come up while you're doing this and kind of try to see how the correspondences of these herbs kind of relate to those things. Um, I feel like that will be a very good way for you guys to get in touch and contact 
and open up to your intuition is through doing these kinds of energy sensing practices and starting to understand what these energies kind of mean to you and what they feel like to you because I feel like your intuition for group number four works in a very similar way. It brings forth certain energies and if you don't understand these energies then you aren't going to understand what your intuition is saying. Um, interesting so let's take a look at what you are meant to look out for right now we have drawing down the moon divine feminine source channel and stillness group number four there is a need for you guys to be aware of misusing power um whether this is you doing it or somebody else doing it, there's a, a big message here your intuition is bringing forth about misusing power, misusing energy, misusing even even kind of misusing your your connection to your intuition. Um, so maybe your intuition is telling you something about a situation and you're using that as a way to get like personal gain. Um, through somebody else's maybe downfall or through somebody else's grief or sadness or lower vibrational energies. Your shadow may be communicating to you that somebody outside of you is in a lower vibration and you may be using that um, as a way to gain something for yourself. Um, kind of like a hitting them while they're down kind of thing, even if you cover it up to make it look like you're doing something good. Um, interesting. So definitely, you know, feel free to reverse these roles if that's what resonates for you, group number four, but also allow yourself to be open to receiving the messages that you need. I know hearing things like this can be kind of triggering or upsetting, and it's hard to see ourselves as somebody who does things that we may look at as bad or negative. Um, but really that feeling, that fear of being looked at that way is the driving force of why we try to make ourselves look better. Um, so don't beat yourself up don't tell yourself that you know you're the worst person in the world or anything like that but definitely be open to receiving the messages um and and be open to the truth of self here group number four so let's go ahead and we're going to look a little deeper into the messages your intuition has for you at this time and then we'll shuffle the tarot out afterwards so group number four we have the child i was <laughs> the child i was meant to be and this can be any more perfect here i really feel for group number four that this is stemming from something um as a child for you guys this is like always trying to Im always trying to impress your parents always trying to you know be good be the good kid be the one that your parents um thought was good there's also something here about um maybe your parents pushing you to be something that made them look better um your parents expecting you to hold up a specific image or a specific job because of the way it looked on them as a parent and it maybe took you away from something that you truly wanted or desired or to, it may have even taken you away from just who you felt like you were meant to be and um, your intuition is trying to lead you back to who you were meant to be instead of this facade of always having to be the good person um our next card here we have uh sahakio and this is angel of the sky so group number four this is definitely i feel like this is about like uh somebody's somebody's watching you like somebody from the heavens um, is watching you guys. But there's also this sense of fate here. There's this sense of destiny, the sense of needing to step into a new phase of life here, group number four. And I feel like that's where you're being led at this time. That's where your intuition is trying to take you. Your intuition is trying to give you the knowledge that you need in order to begin new with a fresh clean start in some way shape or form um we also have here vanth and this is caretaker of the lost uh respite assistance and memory group number four there's something here about doing certain doing certain things 
to care for people or to make people think that you care or, um, you know, for charity or donations or always trying to help somebody get out of a bad time. But it's like your, your initial motive behind that is to make you look like a better person to the people that are watching you. There's something here about trying to make yourself look like something to the people that are watching you. And it's like that that need for them to see you a certain way is the driving factor as to why you do the things you do instead of doing them to actually help or assist somebody. It's, it's some sort of subconscious patterning here that it's made you believe that the way people view you is more important than the actions that you're actually taking. And you guys have kind of lived this way throughout your life, I feel, group number four. Let's go ahead and get you guys some tarot and go a little deeper into what your intuition wants you to know right now, what your intuition wants to say. Group number four. So I do feel for you guys that this is about finding yourself. Um, this is about being able to see yourself in a different way so that you can then um, kind of separate yourself from the views or opinions of other people. I feel like you guys put way too much, um, way too much energy into how other people see you, what other people think of you, um, and those kinds of things. Our first card out here, we have the tower. Um, yeah, so it's, it's time for things to change here, group number four and for some of you guys this could mean having to find a whole new environment to be in this could mean having to tear down some sort of long-standing kind of um, energies in your life like long-standing image that you've held reputation um, this is like tearing down a long-standing reputation group number four in order to rebuild it in a way that's truer to you and who you're meant to be and and what you're meant to be known for it's like you guys have made yourself known for something that you that's outside of yourself um interesting and then we have the one of coins coming out here yeah group number four your intuition is trying to lead you toward a purpose or a mission here um, but in order to do this, they ha your intuition is trying to break you free from this long-standing image that you've built for yourself, whether this is in a job or career or a relationship, whatever it is for you. Um, you guys are coming to a point in your life where you're going to have opportunities for growth, opportunities for change, opportunities to step into who you were meant to be. It's like you guys lost yourself along the way, and it's like maybe you just took a job because it was a job. Maybe you took a job because of the way it made you look to other people or how other people viewed that position um things like that and it's like you guys are being shifted there's a, a big change coming in here a sudden change in perspective a sudden change in the way you view your life or in the way other people view you coming in um and then we have the seven of rods so for some of you guys this could be a change in leadership this could be um, you guys could be coming to a point where maybe you are being promoted and, um, or there's an opportunity for promotion or an opportunity to own your own business for some of you guys. Um, interesting. There's a shift in power here, a change in authority, a change in power, a change in leadership and with this group number four you guys may find yourself feeling like you have to defend i'm seeing this as like having to defend your honor having to defend your your position having to defend your you know your heavyweight belt if you will and um your intuition wants you to let go the of this kind of defense they want you to let go of control. They want you, your intuition wants you to surrender to this change and allow this destruction to happen, even if it means that you lose your job or um, you lose a, a connection or a relationship or a standing of some sort. Because I do feel here that there is going to be a change in your reputation or your standing um, or like the, the position that you're holding is going to change. In order for that to change, you have to let go of the, of where you're at here. Um, 
So it's like time for a new reputation. Interesting. And we have the eight of elixirs. Yeah, there's a need to release, a need to let go, a need to walk away from this long-standing reputation, this long-standing position, a huge need to let go, to release, to cleanse, to wash away, um, whatever this is for you. And then we have the moon. Yeah, so there's a lot of fear about starting over here, group number four, a lot of fear about starting over. And um, maybe you have lived your life in a way where you've had to start over a lot of times in a lot of different ways. Maybe um, you've held a position at a job for a very long time, but in every other aspect of your life, relationships, friendships, things like this, you kind of cycle through them or you have to start over a lot in relationships or in um, even in like your home, maybe you have to move homes a lot. There's like something here where outside of this long-standing position, this long-standing reputation, outside of that, everything kind of falls apart and builds back up and falls apart over and over and over again. And there's like this fear of starting over for you guys that you're holding on to right now. And then we also have the Queen of Blades. Um, yeah, so there is a fear of separation, a fear of loss, a fear of, uh, some of you guys, this is divorce, some of you guys, this is a need to cut away distractions, some of you guys, there, there is a decision that has to be made to walk away from this long-standing relationship or career or whatever this is for you. There is a need to walk away from this long-standing image of self, um, in order to gain independence and freedom. Um, in order to find yourself, group number four. Your intuition is trying to lead you back to who you really are. Um, lead you back to your, your personal power here. Without putting the power in the hands of everybody around you because you've put the power in the way that they see you like you've put in so much significance on the way that other people see you that you have essentially given your power away here um so there is like loss separation letting go divorce um breaking away breaking up energy coming in here in whatever way resonates for you you will know where this is at in your life whether this is in relationships or um maybe a friend or a job or um even just like your reputation whatever it is that you have to separate yourself from in order to start over here um is what this is talking about and then we have justice coming out here some of you guys this there's definitely like legal action coming in here um, some of you guys, this has to do with, as I said, divorce, um, this long-standing reputation. Maybe you married somebody because it made you look better or because you thought you'd get gain more or because of the financial stability or because you thought that that's who you were supposed to be with. Maybe it was like, I, I'm getting like this arranged marriage where maybe you weren't like actually betrothed to somebody, but you were expected to marry somebody of a certain status or of a certain pay range or from a certain family or, um, you know, it's like you guys were led astray but and, and taught that you had to put all of the power into how other people would react to what you do. And that is balancing out as you guys separate yourself from whatever this was for you. Um, some of you guys, there may be le legal action that has to take place in order for you to separate yourself from this. This could be ending a contract early. This could also be balancing like karmic energy for you guys as this reputation or this image is tore down. Um, there is like a closure of a karmic cycle coming in here. we have the king of elixirs and this is calming tonic here so um this is about being in control of your emotions being in control of yourself being in control of how you feel regardless of what other people think or see or believe about you not allowing other people's opinions or perceptions to alter the way you feel about yourself and alter the way that you feel about your life and alter the way that you desire to be a certain way or live in a certain way um 
And then we also have the Queen of Coins coming out here. So I do feel group number four that you guys, um, you, I, I feel like you guys are entering a period of being very uncomfortable as this shift, as this change occurs for you and maybe um, your life is changing very rapidly or very suddenly. Maybe you are separating yourself from a job, a person, a situation, a lifestyle, an environment, whatever that is for you. It is very uncomfortable because that's how you've always lived, but it's leading you towards a new sense of comfort, of luxury, of even sensuality or intimacy that you've never experienced before group number four um you guys your intuition is leading you towards a massive amount of comfort um but that means that things have to change in order for you to get there you know you have to face certain fears um and you have to surrender you have to let go of this control um letting go of this control of the way that people see you or letting go of this control um, in regards to what people believe about you. It's like you might hear somebody say that they think negatively or lower of you than you want them to and it's like that is a driving factor for you to do everything you can to alter their perception of you, to make them see you as a better person, um, but you're not doing it to connect with them or to do something nice for them. You're doing it strictly just to change their perception of you. Um, that is what is changing here, group number four. Interesting. So let's pull you guys a couple last messages from your intuition. Um, any last guidance or advice or anything else that your intuition wants you to know or see here? Um, I'm going to pull two of these and then we have one more after this. So group number four, our first one is the reason it hurts so much to separate is because our souls are connected. So group number four, again, this energy of like divorce or separation is definitely playing a role here. Some of you guys may be going through a separation with a twin flame or a soulmate um, where certain karmic lessons have to come to the surface. Um... And then we also have release your worries and receive universal abundance. Yes, you guys are being led to so much comfort, um, so much abundance, prosperity, luxury, even um, intimacy. Um, some of you guys may be coming back into reconciliation with somebody that maybe you always wanted to be with as you separate yourself from this life that you've created to uphold an image. You are going to come back into contact with somebody that you are meant for. Um, so different messages for different people. Let's go ahead here and pull you one final message from your intuition. Any last guidance or advice? Anything else that your intuition wants you to know or see at this time? Group number four. We have always do your best, and this says love and nurture your body, group number four. Love and nurture your body. Um, your own body is a manifestation of God, and if you honor your body, everything will change for you. Practice giving love to every part of your body. This will plant seeds of love in your mind, and when they grow, you will love, honor, and respect your body immensely. So group number four, you guys are being led to love, honor, and respect yourself instead of needing other people outside of you to do that, okay? Um, and it definitely has a lot to do with connecting to your body. Some of you guys may be able to do this through yoga, through, um, you know, herbs, herbal magic, kitchen magic, really focusing on what you are consuming, what you are putting into your body and how that affects you and how that nourishes you. Um, really, that's really going to help you guys connect to your intuition, I feel, and open up to that. But this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number four. If you enjoyed this reading, if it brought you value, if it resonated with you, please hit that like button, comment down below, let me know how it resonated, let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!